Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra, and in this module, we're going to be talking about on trigger enter. On trigger enter is a function that gets called by a collider that has the is trigger box checked when another collider with a rigid body kind of passes through it, or rather, a rigid body has to be present on one of the two objects. So let me show you what I mean in Unity. So in Unity, I'm going to go ahead and set up a box. This box is going to be our trigger. I'm just going to create a cube. Maybe I'll reset its position. There we go. I'm going to make this box, I don't know, 10 by 10. So we can't miss it, basically. This is going to be our trigger box. And in order to make it a trigger box, I'm going to check this box right here in the box collider component, I'm going to check the is trigger property. So it is a trigger. What that means is when an object passes through it, it will fire an event called on trigger enter. And any script on this game object that implements that method will fire that method. In order for the interaction to take place, one of the two objects has to have a rigid body component. Now, traditionally, the object that is moving is the one that has the rigid body on it. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and create myself a cube. I'm going to reset its position and I'm going to move it up. This cube, I'm going to put a rigid body onto so that it falls into our, our plane. I'm, I'll call this trigger box just to avoid confusion. I'm going to hit play. And what should happen is this box will fall and it will not be stopped by this plane because this plane is a trigger box, which means that it does not necessarily stop or exert forces on anything. Objects can pass straight through it. In fact, normally, I would actually turn off the mesh render. And in most cases, triggers tend to be invisible. I'll leave it on just to make it a little bit easier to see what's happening, though. So let's put a script onto this trigger box that we can use in order to fire a method of some kind. And the method we're going to fire is basically we're just going to put a message into the console, really. This is mostly just to show how this works. I'm going to go ahead and create a script. And I'm just going to call this box trigger because that's what this, this script is going to do. It's basically making this box a trigger. So I'm going to go select the trigger box and I'm going to add box trigger onto the game object that has the trigger box collider. And then I'm going to open up the script. Inside the script, mono behavior is going to be responsible for calling this method that I'm about to make. So I don't actually need anything in this script except for I'm going to declare a void on trigger enter. And autocomplete actually will help me finish this. And in fact, I recommend you allow audio autocomplete finish this because it comes with a parameter also. So this parameter, whenever on trigger enter is fired, it will pass you a reference to the collider that caused this trigger. So if inside this method, I add a debug.log message was triggered by, and then I add um, some information that's on the other collider. So I'm gonna say other dot, I don't, yeah, other dot name. We should be able to see when I save and I go back into Unity, when this box goes through our trigger box, we should see a message in the console that names the cube one. So we hit play, we watch the cube fall, and as soon as it goes into it, was triggered by cube one. So we have gotten on trigger enter to work. Now, technically, right, we don't actually have to have the rigid body on this cube. If I wanted to, I could remove this component, add, I guess, a rigid body onto our trigger box. There we go. And we can make it so that our trigger box falls through the cube. And that's what causes the trigger to happen, right? So our, our, our trigger box, there we go, it will fall. And then when it enters through the cube, it says was triggered by cube one. So it doesn't really matter which object the rigid body is on. Although traditionally, like I say, the rigid body goes onto the object that's moving and triggers don't tend to move that much. Usually triggers will be like in a specific place in the scene. And when you like move your hand through it or when you walk your character, through it on trigger enter will fire and do something however a very common thing to do in this on trigger enter method is to check if the right thing was the one that actually entered this this method so for example what i want to happen now is i want this cube to fall through the the trigger without actually um causing the method to fire and then i'm going to duplicate this i'm going to have i'm going to say the one true cube I'm going to want to make sure this second cube actually does fire the trigger. And the way I'm going to do that is with a 
tag. I'm going to use the tag on the object in order to check if it's the right one. So I'm going to say the one true cube, I'm going to tag it as a player. So I want to make sure that this trigger only gets invoked if the collider that has gone, that has triggered it, has the tag player. I'm going to go into Visual Studio, and inside here, I'm going to start an if statement. I'm going to check if other dot compare tag. So I'm going to compare the tag. This is a function, by the way. Um, compare tag is a function that accepts a string, and the string is the name of the tag that I'm checking for. So if other dot compare tag player, what it does is it goes and it checks if the other collider has the tag player. And if so, then I'm going to debug.log. I'll put in the message that was a player. And so we want that was a player to show up only once, but we're, we expect to see this debug.log message twice. So now the one true cube has a rigid body, cube one has a rigid body. I've removed the rigid body off of the trigger box. What should happen is this cube will fall through. It'll fire the, the first debug.log message. It'll tell us its name, but it won't trigger the that was a player because the, it doesn't have the player tag, right? This cube one is untagged. And then the second one, the one true cube, which is tagged as player, we expect to see that player message. So when I hit play, we should see both cubes fall. First one, just one message. Second one, two messages. And there we go. We only see that was a player once and we use this a lot in in triggers because colliders are invisible and once your scene gets up to a certain size there's often a lot of colliders in it that you might accidentally trigger things with and so it's a usually a good idea to check to make sure if the thing that triggered us was the object that we were expecting because sometimes there's just a lot of colliders floating around in your scene so that was everything for the on trigger enter method thank you for watching this module